Okay, part two, let's go ahead and go through the solution to homework 1B. 1B is just like 1A, the only difference is that instead of paying cash, we're giving shares of stock to the previous owner of Little Company. Um, again, all the same information as before, but now we're going to assume that Big gave Little's owners 12,000 shares of $1 par value Big Company common stock valued at $550,000, and they incurred stock issuance costs of $10,000 in issuing these shares. Again, the first thing we need to do is figure out the fair value of the net assets and whether there's goodwill or not. So net assets of a fair value of $780,000 for the assets, $210,000 for the liabilities, net assets $570,000. And now we're giving the previous owners shares of stock worth $550,000. So somehow we ended up buying this company for less than the fair value of its net assets and we're gonna have a $20,000 bargain purchase. Okay, so again, we're gonna go and record the acquisition of all the various assets at fair value. We assume all of the liabilities at fair value, again, noting the discount on bonds payable, reconciling the fair value of the bonds to their face value. We record the $20,000 gain on bargain purchase and we record the issuance of the shares of stock, 12,000 shares at $1 par value for the common stock account, the remainder of that $538,000 paid in capital in excess of par. And then just for a little perhaps necessary review, stock issuance costs are treated as a reduction of paid in capital. So we wrote a check for $10,000 to cover these various stock issuance costs, and that reduces our paid in capital in excess of par. Um, again, in this example, we had a $20,000 gain on bargain purchase, one of the few cases where we can show a gain by acquiring an asset, or in this case, a collection of assets.